Now, if you've been standing in Blackpool in April or May last year, it might just have felt a little bit like this. Two minor earth tremors were reported, measuring around magnitude 2, caused by fracking. Now, that's the mining of gas and uh, resources by breaking apart rocks that lie more than a mile beneath the Earth's surface. It was temporarily suspended, but today the Energy Secretary, Ed Davey, gave it renewed backing, just so long as there's proper monitoring and controls. Now, he says it's a promising new potential energy resource, but is it safe and environmentally sound? Our science editor, Tom Clark, now reports. Surrounding the village of Balkan is tranquility itself, only interrupted by the odd Brighton to London train. But today's decision to give a green light to fracking in Lancashire after minor earthquakes there has shaken this village. They could be next. At the end of this lane lies a drilling site licensed by fracking firm Quadrilla. If they do come down here, uh, they, will, they will have a very uh, unhappy welcome from the local residents. There was a survey done by our parish council recently here in Balkan, and the result was that 82% of the respondents said that they did not want fracking, fracking to go ahead. Um, I don't think it's safe. I don't think anyone thinks it's safe. But the government has decided it is with the right conditions. We're confirming that the regulatory regime is going to be much better coordinated, and for any company to want to start exploratory fracking, they have to go through a series of permits uh, from my department, from the Environment Agency, from the Health and Safety Executive, and planning permission from the local authorities. So uh, just because a company says it wants to uh, go fracking doesn't mean it will go fracking. The technique involves drilling thousands of metres into rock called shale, and then injecting high pressure water and chemical additives to fracture or frack the rock that releases the natural gas stored within. It revolutionised energy markets in America, slashing gas prices, but it has also polluted waterways and scarred landscapes, a fact not lost on clients at Heads Together Hair and Beauty in Balkan. The um, potential problems um, would far outweigh um, the, the good things about fracking, so um, if you were to ask me, I'd say that I wouldn't want fracking anywhere near this village. I don't agree with it. I don't know enough about it, but I don't think you need to be ruining the village, and I think that's what will happen. The government insists it puts the concerns of communities like Balkan ahead of fracking. But the lure of locally produced gas and the tax revenues that would generate mean fracking probably has a future in the UK. How big a future depends on how much gas there is under the ground. Well, there's a lot of shale in Britain. This is northern Britain here. Over here you've got this simulator at the British Geological yeah. Survey in Nottingham can tell you exactly where the crucial shale layers are. If we flip up the earth and start to look down. So, all right, so we're, we're flying through subterranean Britain. Below now. where Quadrilla are interested in. This is the base of the sandstone from yeah. which people get their water in, in that area. And if we just go down a little bit further, this is a big, deep hollow of shale. In all, there are reserves of shale across Britain, some a mile thick. But does that mean gas? The shale itself, there's a lot of it, but. Just having shale doesn't mean there's loads of gas because the shale has to be, uh, has to have a lot of carbon in it, has to have been warmed up or cooked up to the sort of temperature that makes it release the gas. And so the shale, although we might have a lot of it, doesn't mean there's an awful lot of gas in the country. So there'll be fierce local opposition, then the task of proving meaningful amounts of gas can be had. In America, it took 20 years for fracking to catch on. It could take just as long in Britain if it catches on at all. Tom Clark. Well, we're joined now from Westminster by the Green Party MP, Caroline Lucas, and from Los Angeles by the filmmaker, Felim McAleer, who's made the documentary Frack Nation, aimed at dispelling myths about fracking, which were released next year. Uh, Felim McAleer, not in time to prevent the decision that's been made in Britain today, but I wondered, let's just deal with the first issue that ex we're very uh, perplexed by here, and that's earthquakes. We've had a couple of, so, you know, well, measurable earthquakes in Blackpool. What, what does your film say about earthquakes? 
If you're worried about earthquakes, you shouldn't be worried about fracking. They're not dangerous. If you, uh, fracking, uh, earthquakes are caused by almost every energy production. The worst for earthquakes is geothermal, which is a, a hugely favoured energy source for the, for the green movement. Uh, coal mining causes seismic activities. Hydroelectric, uh, it has caused earthquakes that have killed people in India. So fracking is well down the list. Of, of, green, of energy produce, production okay. uh, for the cause let, let me, for let the me, causing let of me earthquakes. Pause, let me pause you there. And, uh, Caroline Lucas, do we agree, therefore, earthquakes are not something we need to worry too much about? Well, I think it's right to say that, that tremors are associated with any number of different kinds of, of um, explorations of, of, of fossil fuels and so forth. So on that one, I think that's, that's the, one of the less of our, of our worries, but there are plenty more that we've got to worry right, about. Right, well, let's deal with the next one, which is how much more environmentally friendly is it than natural gas, as we've called it, and oil? Sorry, who, who's that? That's to you, Caroline Lucas, sorry. Sorry. Um, it's it's probably um, less damaging than, than oil in terms of carbon emissions, but if you compare it to natural gas, then there are real concerns that because of the methane that can be uh, emitted at the same time, it may well be worse than natural gas. But, but if I might say, I think the point is in a sense that the Climate Change Committee is making it really clear that a dash for gas is absolutely going to bust our climate change targets. And so in a sense, you know, the fact that it might be marginally better than, than oil doesn't actually help us very much in the sense that it's still going to be adding considerably uh, to our uh, carbon emissions. And what we ought to be doing is making the comparison not between the fossil fuels, but between fossil fuels on the one hand and renewables on the other. There was a very interesting report by Cambridge Econometrics just last week that showed that if you went all out for an offshore wind scenario instead of the uh, shale gas scenario, what you would have is uh, 70,000 more jobs, you'd save £20 billion, you'd have lower emissions and lower fuel bills. Right, that, let me I pause think, you is the real game. And, and ask uh, Felim McAleer, uh, do you agree with all that? Well, Cambridge Econometrics is a private company that consults for the wind industry. So uh, that, that's the conclusion they came from, Kel Surprise. Um, they're not an independent group. Um, look, only a few years ago, the green the green movement was uh, was was touting gas as as a bridge fuel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's when gas was going to run out. Now that shale's been discovered, uh, they seem to not like excessive amounts of fossil fuels, uh, and, and and that's I suppose that's what they do. That's that's their idea. But this is, this is going to change energy dynamics. It's going to mean that Britain can get energy from its from domestic energy, not be relying on the Middle East oil, not be relying on regimes that, that hang people for adultery, that stone people for being gay. Uh, this is going to be but clean it's not the only uh, way of achieving uh, that. and ethical energy, uh, ethic, clean and ethical energy Let uh, from Lucas a country just make a point from, to you. from, from democracy. Let make a point to you. Well, the point I would make is yes. that I would agree with, with him uh, in terms of, of wanting secure energy, ethical energy, if he wants to call it that. But the way to do that is by having our own renewable sources and by a massive investment in energy efficiency. That would uh, in ensure that we have much greater uh, energy security, but it would also, crucially, keep but, our prices but isn't down. It because true, right Caroline, now. Caroline, okay. Can him, I just say yep. about the prices just to finish on. that point? But Caroline, isn't it true? Caroline, isn't it yep. true that Cambridge Econometrics, the, the, the report you cited, that they work for the wind energy, they work for the renewable energies? It's not an independent source, uh, as you, it, as it you is, said. It is an independent source, but let me talk about the, the cost, because that's the challenge I'd like to put to you, because well, here in the UK, two-thirds of the um, uh, increase in, in our fuel bills that we've seen over the last few years, two-thirds of that increase has come from gas prices. So if we want to wean ourselves off higher gas prices and volatile gas prices, the way to do it is precisely through uh, cultivating our own national renewables, not going down the road of gas. And there's a report no, produced no. just today by the Committee no, on Caroline, Climate Change. Caroline. I'll just finish on the Committee on Climate Change because I don't agree with you about Cambridge Econometrics, but you're certainly not going to be able to say right. that the Committee on Climate Change isn't independent. But They've said basically that, you, you know, if you went down the renewables route by 2020, that might put £100 pounds okay. on your energy bills, £600 pounds if you go down the gas route. Felim, last, last answer. Uh, well, listen, you, you can reduce gas bills by producing more gas, and that's what, that's what fracking is going to do. Mm. It's ridiculous to say that the, the, the prices are high. Prices are high because gas is running out. When there's more gas, law of supply and demand, uh, prices will drop. The price of gas has, has fallen by 400% in America in the last five years, all because of fracking.
Well, I'm going to have to leave it there, although I think you probably would agree, Karen Lucas, that one of the warnings that has been put out today is that gas won't get any cheaper. But thank That's you right. both indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy.